Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to examine um, a battery from a self-balancing scooter and I've actually tried these batteries on an e-bike and they don't perform, perform super well when you start putting 26 amps from these they uh, they kind of drop in voltage pretty quick um, and since then I've realized that you have to use better cells um, which are capable of that kind of discharge current <clears throat> but nonetheless I wanted to take a look at one of these and um, show you guys some of the interesting design flaws that I found in them. Um, this one actually has a case, which is kind of unusual. This is what they look like inside of there. Up here you have the battery management system, and um, that has a link to every single cell. Uh, but I'm going to open up this one, as this one's still functioning. I, I've kind of cannibalized this one a little bit. As I've been taking the cells out of here because it's not much use if I can't use it on a bike. So we'll take this apart and we'll take a look at the innards and um, I'll show you what I found. All right, so here you see an actual functioning battery. This is an XT60 connector and we trace it down here you'll see it goes down with the positive wire and the positive wire is actually at the end of the series um, series of battery connections and is connected directly and then the negative wire which comes down here goes onto the BMS on the other side of the BMS are these sense wires and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this has eleven sense wires, <clears throat> and there are ten sets of cells in series, which means this has a connection on every connection that there is. So you have the negative, um, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this would probably be connected to the positive. And if we look back, for sure there is a wire coming to the positive terminal. Um, sometimes you find that these only have 10 wires and um, in that case it just doesn't need the positive connection I guess which I'm not sure how that works we'll have to figure that out <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys this pack powering an incandescent light bulb this is a 40 watt bulb rated for 120 volts and this pack is at about 42 volts right now I'm going to run it through a boost converter, which will be turned off initially, so this bulb should be getting about 40, 40 some volts. And there we go. So the voltage here is saying 40.68, over here we've got 42.08, and you can see the bulb's kind of dim. Now this can boost to 120 volts, so if I turn this on... And I guess turn it up. So there we go. Pretty bright. And you guys probably can't read this other side. Let me try to dim this down. But we're putting about 52 watts from the 36 volt battery right now at approximately 1.28 amps. So I'm going to shut this back off again. All right, so what's interesting to me, though, is that is really the way this BMS works. And <clears throat> I'm not sure it's actually a fault of the BMS, but more the design of this overall battery. So if you look here, you have... Um, B minus, which is battery negative, and that actually goes over to the negative side of the series connections. And then you have down here C minus and P minus. Now C minus is for charging, and P minus is for power. And so, bearing in mind that the positive wire is always connected. Um, the way that this BMS should be set up 
is that there should be a charge cable coming to the C minus, and then there should be a power cable going to the P minus. So when you have a battery like this, there should be two um, cables coming out of there, one which you use to charge the battery, and another which you use to power a device. And you can see that this, this power one has, um, has two spots to be soldered, and clearly you don't charge the battery at the same rate in which you discharge it. So this is kind of a Ford of theirs, and I think it actually has some consequences. So I'm going to try and put off this tape. I'm going to take this thing apart. Oh, <laughs> wrong screwdriver. I actually bent the, uh, bent the tip off of this one. Oh, my, uh, my little watt meter down here seems to have gone a little crazy. Weird things are happening. But, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> okay, so... So in come the sense wires, and right here you have uh, these circuits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have ten, one for every series connection. <clears throat> and the purpose of each of these is to monitor the voltage of um, each cell, or in this case it's two cells in parallel, and <clears throat> if the cell starts to go above a set voltage, which might be around 4.25 volts, these little MOSFETs here will turn on and they will slowly discharge the, uh, the cell. Um, it's very, very slow. So you can see, I'm not sure what this chip is here, but anyway, so this is, this is kind of um, some of the, the, the burning off power section. And then over here we have these, these FETs that can turn on or turn off the power. And so these two are clearly linked to the actual battery negative connection, whereas these two are linked into the charger connection. And then over here you see you have this, this power negative. Which doesn't appear to have, it doesn't go through these these FETs, they only go through these ones. And this is on the return. So if you were pushing current, let's see, if you were pulling power from this and you had this wire going through here, then it would come across and you wouldn't have any volt drop. But if you are running a device through these FETs, then you can use it, but you're gonna experience um, volt drop on these two FETs because it's going to have to go through a small diode in there to get back and complete the circuit. So in theory, when we're running um, running any load on this, we're actually burning off a bunch of the power. And I should be able to prove that if I take a voltmeter and measure the volt drop between here and here. I always forget to turn these meters off, and I don't know how long they'll last and if they become inaccurate. Oh look, that, uh, that little watt meter's gone crazy again. I guess that one's just had it, but whatever. Let's try to figure this out. It just said beer, did you guys see that? <laughs> There's something really up with that. I wonder if I... Oh, I don't know what's wrong with that, but anyway. So we have... We have the bulb running, and we're putting a small amount of power right now. Let's turn it off and on again. There's some real sparks going on there. Okay, so we're putting about 15 watts, 0.34 amps. And I want to make sure you guys can see the, um, the meter. 
So I'm measuring the volt drop right now between, push this back a bit, between here and here. There's no volt drop. I was wrong. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I really thought there was going to be a volt drop, but there isn't one. <clears throat> so, if there's no drop between there, then, while I'm pulling power, I wonder if there's a drop when I'm pushing. Well, there's one way to find out. Alright, so I'm going to connect this to um, power set at 43.1. And we're pushing about an amp. So let's see now if we're getting any. Huh. Nope, still nothing. Go figure. Oh, we are getting something. Did you guys see that? This is really hard to... to catch. I wonder if this voltmeter's messed up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try a different one. Here we go. Oh, here we go. 12.3 millivolts. That's not very much, is it? 6.2. Six. So that's probably just general resistance. Okay, well, that's great. Let's try this again. Oh, wonderful. Okay. All right, so we're back taking power again. <clears throat> what is the volt drop now? Three millivolts. Hmm. Well, I guess I was wrong. It's kind of interesting. And if we up the power, to the point in which we're pulling 1.24 at a 14.8 millivolt drop. So I wonder, what is the resistance of that connection if it's 14.8? Let me find out. So a quick calculation suggests that the, the resistance would be about 0.011 ohms. And if I was putting 26 amps through this, I'd be losing about 8 watts on these connections, which would explain why this heatsink would get pretty hot. Um, but there definitely isn't any volt drop occurring in between these resistors, so clearly I've got that wrong, and it doesn't seem to matter that this is connected right here. However, would it be better to have it connected here? I don't know. 
I'm going to do some more experimenting and um, going to have to figure that one out. I think I'm going to make another part on this video and what I'd like to test would be um, whether or not when we overcharge a particular cell or even overcharge the whole pack, do these start cutting in? And more importantly, does it cut off the power? Um, really, if one of these particular cells gets too high, these, um, these MOSFETs should turn off. And on the other hand, if we drain this pack down, does it disable the output? So look out for that in another video. Ha <laughs> ha.